प्रीवियस लेक्चर में हमने कंटिन्यूस फंक्शंस को डिस्कस किया था लेट्स कंटिन्यू द सेम लेट्स कंटिन्यू द सेम डिस्कशन एंड कंटिन्यूस मैपिंग्स ओके कंटिन्यूस मैपिंग्स कंटिन्यूस मैपिंग्स Let X and Y be metric spaces uh, with matrices D1 and D2. Okay. Let uh, X D1 and Y D2. X D1 and Y D2 be metric spaces. And uh, we have find x not in x. A map f from x to y is said to be continuous. said to be continuous at x naught if for all epsilon positive there exists a delta positive such that d1 of x x not less than delta implies d2 of fx fx not less than epsilon so now uh, we convert this definition into spheres okay or equivalently or equivalently for each open sphere for each let's look at this okay so it is the open sphere with center at fx not in radius epsilon okay so for each open sphere for each open sphere s with radius epsilon and centered at x f of x naught and here exists an open sphere s delta x naught such that uh, such that whenever x belongs to this open sphere then image should be here such that x belongs to s delta x naught implies f of x belongs to s epsilon f of x naught f of x naught that is the that is this uh, that is this the the image uh, the image of the sphere with center at delta x with radius delta and center x naught this should be in s epsilon f of x naught so that's the equivalent form of continuous definition of continuous function at a point x naught so these two are uh, same actually x belongs to s delta x naught implies fx belongs to s epsilon fx naught it's uh, this is equivalent to this one this containment f image of sphere open sphere s delta x naught is contained in image of is contained in the open sphere with center 
add f of x naught and reduce epsilon so you can easily uh, verify these two are actually equivalent so if, if you choose x here then that x must be here so some point here okay if you choose y here y must be the image of some point f of x so that means x must be here then then f x must be here okay that's uh, that's very simple you can easily verify it these two are actually equivalent so uh, now uh, we have a following theorem on continuous mappings and, and the theorem is that x and y be metric spaces understood matrices in t1 d2 so i will not mention here uh, matrices here okay so let x and y be matrix spaces and f is a mapping and f from x to y this is a given mapping okay then uh, uh then this thing happens then f is continuous at x naught f is continuous at x naught if and only if if and only if x n converges to x not obviously this we can x and it is from x implies implies this we can f of x and converges to f of x not right so uh, these two are equivalent these two statements proof proof assume this f is continuous at x naught okay assume assume f from x to y is continuous at x naught is continuous at x naught suppose uh, this continuous at x naught uh, we need to show that whenever we have a sequence so x n which converges to x naught this should imply f of x n converges to f of x naught so let us assume that x n converges to x naught okay assume that we have a sequence x n which converges to x naught we need to show that f of x n converges to f of x naught we show that f of x n converges to f of x naught so convergence ke liye aapko kya prove karna hai uh, we need to show that for each epsilon positive there exists some n such that f of uh, x n belongs to the sphere with center at f of x naught and radius epsilon for each n greater or equal to capital n okay so let's choose any epsilon positive let epsilon be any positive number epsilon be any positive number Okay, so uh, uh, since uh, our f is continuous at uh, x naught, okay. So given any sphere, I can find a sphere uh, with radius at delta, so that this uh, s epsilon f x naught is contained in s. Uh, this is a uh, uh, 
so let's see the definition again here if you want to apply the definition let's see this let's see this one okay for each open sphere there exists an open sphere as delta x not such that this happens okay so let's uh, apply this one so epsilon positive means we have an open sphere as epsilon of x naught then by definition by definition of continuity at x naught there exists delta positive such that image of this sphere is contained in this sphere so name it star okay <coughs> name it star again since x and converges to again Since x and converges to x now so it means that uh, for any epsilon first i can find capital n such that x and belongs to the sphere with center at x not a radius so that positive number for each and greater or equal to n capital n okay so uh, let's choose that uh, uh, that uh, that uh, the, uh, the the positive number as delta okay delta that you already chosen so uh, there exists then there exists capital N greater or equal to 1 such that such that this x and it belongs to S delta x naught for all n greater or equal to capital N. So this is the this is the definition of by, by the definition of convergence. But uh, but then f of x and must in f of s delta x naught. So this implies this implies f of x n it belongs to f of s delta x naught for all n greater or equal to capital n. But this one it is subset of uh, s epsilon f x naught. So it means that f of x n it belongs to s epsilon f of x naught for all n greater or equal to n so that means for each epsilon pass to i can find capital n say that f of x n belongs to the sphere with center at f of x naught and radius epsilon which means that by definition of convergence it means that f of x n converges to f of x naught so this proves the one part now conversely we assume that given any sequence x and converges to x naught implies f of x and converges to f of x naught we show that f is continuous at x naught okay conversely assume that x n converges to x naught implies so you have to apply star apply okay by star okay now again a star you can see that again it's this one star okay <coughs> okay so implies that f of x n it converges to f of x naught we show that f is continuous at f is continuous at x naught okay we assume on contrary that f is not continuous at x naught assume assume on contrary that f is not continuous at x naught so let's Let's apply the definition of discontinuity at a point. Okay, so let's first see the definition of continuity again here. So continuity means that uh, let's look at this for any epsilon positive, I can find delta positive such that f 
f of s delta x naught is contained in s epsilon of x naught. So uh, if the function is that for each epsilon positive, I can find delta positive. Okay. So if the function is not continuous, then I can find epsilon positive such that for any delta, this f of s delta x naught is not contained in this. Okay. So I can find epsilon positive such that uh, this s delta is not contained in f of s delta is not contained in s epsilon of x naught. But uh, you have to so uh, so I can see this is not continuous at x naught so then then there exists an open sphere s epsilon f of x naught such that such that uh, such that the image of each super okay such that this happens such that such that f of such that uh, such that for all delta positive okay for all delta positive s delta of x naught is not contained in s epsilon f of x naught <clears throat> okay this is not contained here for each delta positive for each delta positive so so therefore for all n greater or equal to 1 so for all n greater or equal to 1 f of this sphere this carried is 1 over n here this is not contained in epsilon is a fixed number okay right so uh, for n equal to 1 s1 x naught is uh, the sphere of radius 1 this sphere is not contained in this sphere that means uh, uh, for the sphere s1 x naught we have a point in this sphere in this image set such that that point is not here so suppose that point is x1, uh, f of x1, or you can say x1 is in the sphere s1 x0, that means f of x1 is in the sphere s1 x0, okay? And f of x1 is not in s epsilon f x0, because it is not contained in here. So at least one point is lies in this set, but not in this set. So which for each n we can choose a point huh? for n equal to 1 we choose x1 such so that f of x1 is here but f of x1 is not here similarly which for n equal to 2 we choose f of x2 which is in s1 over 2 x0 for n equal to 3 I can choose f of x3 which is in f of s1 over 3 x0 okay so uh, therefore this means this implies we can choose this implies for all n greater or equal to 1 That's right this implies for all n greater or equal to 1 we can choose x n in x okay this such that such that uh, the point uh, such that f of x such that x n belongs to s 1 over n x naught but the image is not in s epsilon f of x naught okay so this means that uh, distance between x n and x naught is less than 1 over n but this means for all n, okay? That's right. For all n greater equal to one, distance between x n and x naught is less, sorry, less than one over n. But, but distance between f of x n and f of x naught is greater than epsilon. For all n greater equal to one, okay? So, but then it means that x n converges to x naught, but f of x n 
does not converge to f of x naught, which is a contradiction because our assumption is that whenever x and converges to x naught, this should imply f of x and converges to f of x naught, a contradiction. A contradiction is required. <coughs> okay. So this was the first theorem on continuity. Uh, so when we say function is continuous on whole space, so let's, uh, let's uh, have a first definition. Let f is a function between the matrix spaces x and y. Okay, between the matrix spaces x and y, we say f is continuous. We say f is continuous if it is continuous at each point of x okay if it is continuous at each point of x okay so the next term uh, which is very important uh, <coughs> Uh, that's this Let x and y be matrix spaces let x and y be matrix spaces and f is a mapping from x into y Then f is continuous. Then f is continuous if and only if inverse image of open set is open. Okay, if and only if f inverse g is open in X whenever g is opening y <coughs> so first we assume that f is continuous and we show that inverse image of open sets open so assume that f from x into y is continuous is continuous okay so we show that I need we show that f in g is open is is open in X whenever G is open in Y. G is open. So let's take any open set in Y. We show that it is inverse image is open in X. So let the G be an open set. If f inverse g is empty, then there is nothing. You can be proven again open. If it's empty, then there is nothing to prove. Then there is nothing to prove. So assume it's non empty. Assume. F in G is non. I mean, prove that yes, it open. That means we need to show that every point of F in G is it is interior point. So let's choose a point. Let X belongs to F in G. So, but then this means F X belongs to what? G. F X belongs to G. 
and uh, this g is an open set uh, in x it's open in y so i can find some sophia i can find some sophia which is contained in g so so therefore there exists some uh, some epsilon positive such that this sophia s epsilon Oh, S epsilon key here. S epsilon f of x. It's contained in G. But now uh, our f is continuous, so it again means that uh, uh, f is continuous at x also so because it's continuous, so it's a continuous at every point. So whenever it's continuous at x, then for any epsilon positive, I can find delta positive such so that. Uh, so the image of s delta x is contained in s epsilon of x so sinus 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 f is continuous at x so therefore for each epsilon positive i can find delta positive in particular for this epsilon i can find delta positive there is delta positive such that such that uh, this uh, uh, such that uh, f of s delta x is contained in what uh, it's contained in uh, this s epsilon f of x which is contained in t so which means that f of s delta x is contained in g so that means uh, s delta x s delta x is contained in uh, f in order to because if i choose any point here then image of that part must be in g okay so that's uh, trivial So, uh, which means that uh, uh, for any point x in f inverse g, I can find delta positive such that the open sphere which center at x and radius delta is contained in f inverse g, which means that x is interior point. X is an interior point. Interior point of f inverse g and hence f inverse g is an open set and hence f inverse g is an open set in x now uh, we assume that inverse image of open sets open we show that f is continuous we show that f is continuous so now assume that <clears throat> that f inverse g is open whenever g is open We, we show that f is continuous okay we show that this map f from x to y is conti continuous means it is continuous at every point so we choose any point x here we show that it's continuous at that point so let x is in x that x is in x okay x is in x so uh, we show that this is continuous at x that means for any sphere for every sphere with center at fx there exists a sphere with center at delta such that uh, such that f of s delta x is contained in s epsilon fx so let's choose any sphere okay let s epsilon fx be any sphere be any sphere be any sphere with cent with center at x okay with center at f of x sorry Okay, so uh, this sphere it contains the point 
fx right it contains this point and this sphere uh, it's a sphere in y let this be an, be any sphere any open sphere okay any open sphere in y okay so it's an open subset of y actually it is an open subset of y so therefore therefore this is an open subset of y this is an open subset of y right now a buyer assumption that inverse image of open set is open that means inverse image of this set is also open which means that f inverse s epsilon f of x is open in y and obviously x is there x is the point of this and and x belongs to f inverse s epsilon f of x okay x is there so x is the point of this open set it's an open set in uh, it's an open set in x sorry not in y and contains a point x uh, so uh, this x must be an interior point of this set so, so therefore 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 x is an x is an interior point of f inverse s epsilon f of x so there exists a delta positive there is delta positive such that the open sphere with center at x and radius delta is contained in this set which is an open set okay s epsilon so it's a very simple this yes, you have to apply the definition only s delta this so but then this means f of s delta x is contained in f of f inverse s epsilon of f of x okay applying f on both sides and f f inverse of a set is subset of the set it's subset of s epsilon so this is a basic set theory it is not too difficult so uh for each open sphere with center at f of x i can find an open sphere with center at x such that image of that open sphere is contained in this which means that f is continuous so sir if you have to use f f inverse of a set is subset of the set okay. this means f is this means f is continuous f is continuous at x and hence f is and hence f is a continuous function and hence f is a continuous is a continuous function is a continuous mapping okay so ye aapne isme use kiya hai uh, if we have uh, we have this f f inverse of a set is subset of a set okay so you choose a point here that is always in this set so verify this in case in case f is bijective to then uh, equality holds straight because f, f inverse is the identity in that case equality holds but if f is any mapping then f f inverse of a sub stuff a So this uh, proves the theorem. Uh, so these are the theorems on continuous mappings. On continuous uh, mappings. Now uh, our uh, next theorem, this is which is on uniform continuous, uh, that I will only state here. The statement is okay. 
let x be a metric space and y be a complete metric space let x be a metric space and y be a complete metric space by be a complete metric space okay it's a complete metric space let let a be a dense subset of x a b a b a dense subset of x that is a closure is equal to x now uh, if f from this dense subset to y is uniformly continuous is uniformly continuous then it can be extended uniquely then then f can be extended uniquely uh, extend uniquely to a uniformly continuous mapping to a uniformly continuous uh, mapping uh, g of x into y to a uniformly continuous mapping g from x into y so this is the statement eh? so whenever f is a uniform continuous mapping from a to y then i can find a uniform continuous mapping from whole space x to y such that this g is an extension of f so that is or i can write it like this that is there exists a there is unique okay there is unique uniformly continuous mapping g from x into y such that the g is extension g is extension g is extension of f means that g of a is same as f of a for all a in a a per donu mapping is equal hai or g jo hai na it's a, it is different on bigger space f is bigger on the lower space so lower space par donu function is same hai matlab a is a lower set donu uh, function is same hai a par aur g is different on the higher set uh, bigger set which is x so these two must be equal on this uh, set a okay then we say this g is extension of f, okay g is extension of f so that's the theorem uh, so it's uh, like this this is set a this is our set y and uh, this is the mapping f which is uniformly continuous so i can find a mapping g from the whole space this is x i can find g okay this is g such that uh, on this set a both g and f are equal okay they have equal values in y both f and g on the set a f sirf is a per defined g star is set per defined sorry x per matlab g a per be defined or a per kaise define it's same as f on a iska proof from next lecture mein dekhenge any question Yes